In our gardens are hidden hundreds of wild stories that we rarely discover. Great dramas of life and death. Stories about teamwork and looking out for one's own interests. About standing on one's own feet. About doing the impossible. Where mistakes can cost you dearly and life can change in the blink of an eye. For a year, we followed life as it unfolds in our gardens. To get close to the secrets of the garden. Summer is coming to a close in our gardens. The late summer sun hangs lazily in the sky. Right now, there's an abundance of food in the garden which benefits both animals and humans. But this time of the summer is also the beginning of the end. And the animals must prepare for the harsh season waiting just around the corner. It's time to say goodbye and take leave, because autumn is coming. In a quiet corner, a hedgehog mother is walking her little teenage hoglets. They've had a long and carefree summer. It's hard to imagine that just six weeks ago, this male hedgehog was tiny and living in the compost heap with his siblings. He was completely defenceless, but got milk, warmth and care in the safe den. So he and his siblings could start training to become grown-ups. They practiced rolling up, and little by little, they started to crawl. For the last few weeks, the male hedgehog has practiced going further and further away from the den and his mum. He's now moving around the lawn with great familiarity, even though he's almost blind. To get his bearings and find food, he uses his highly developed hearing and sense of smell instead. So he easily misses a little treat in the grass because his nose has sniffed out something far more exciting. The hedgehog primarily lives off little animals like earthworms, beetles and insects. But this earthworm apparently isn't interesting enough to eat. He'll soon have to stop being so picky, because from now on, there's no more of Mum's fatty milk. You see, at six weeks, you're an adult, and it's time for you to leave the childhood home. He'll say goodbye to his siblings and his mother. He'll probably never see her son again. and dangerous times to come for the little male hedgehog. He no longer has a home and must find and create a whole new place to hibernate before it starts freezing. Underneath the bark of an old birch in the garden, there's a buzz of activity. These distinct jet black ants are busy packing up their supplies in little holes they've gnawed into the bark. But it's not just cosy autumn chores. This is actually micro-world slavery. The ants keep 
the somewhat bigger giant oak aphids as slaves. They milk the giant oak aphids' sweet and nutritious fluids which sustain them. For a short while, this aphid is left alone. This is it if it wants to escape. ants are on it again instantly. And it's sent back down into the hole. The dark dungeons are now the aphids' homes for these next several months. Not until spring will the ants release them and send them back out onto the leaves. Aphids aren't just slaves of the ants, but also enemies of the trees. Only few know just how desperate the autumn aphids make the trees. The beautiful red and yellow colours of the trees are actually warning cries. Because when aphid mothers want to lay their eggs in the autumn, the trees defend themselves against an attack. And the strategy is simple leaves of all kinds of beautiful colours to scare them off. And completely ignorant of this, we humans are enthralled by the incredible beauty of the autumn. Far beneath the small piles of leaves in the garden, there's still lots of life. A slender and graceful little figure slides silently across the brown autumn floor. The female slow worm. She looks like a snake, but is in fact a lizard without legs. Like so many other animals in the garden, she needs to find a good place to hibernate. But before this slender beauty is ready for bed, she needs to fill her slim belly and catch the remaining insects that haven't yet died or pupated. So she is looking for her last meal. Not too far away, the movements are less graceful. This big boy of a caterpillar is also heading for a final place to lie down and sleep the winter away. What looks like baby fat is actually mussels. The last few years the caterpillar has munched its way through a bunch of rotten wood and grown bigger and bigger to get ready to pupate and turn into an adult moth. But now it has enough energy to say goodbye to life as a caterpillar and take the next step. So it's heading for a place to end its teenage life. But right now, the little chubby caterpillar is a fitting last meal for the female slow worm. And the hunt is on. At first sight, there appears to be no contest, and usually the slow worm wins the battle. But up close, the slow worm must realize 
that the well-fed caterpillar is too big of a mouthful and retreats. They each glide on towards their winter homes. The slow worm will go to sleep in a big pile of leaves. The caterpillar, on the other hand, will dig itself in and turn into an adult moth that will wake up next spring. And in this way, our gardens are full of almost invisible little dramas. we get ready for a new season. We pack up the outdoor life of the summer. We stack the patio furniture and firewood and remove piles and messes before moving inside. But our tidy gardens become like deserts for the animals. They need piles and corners to protect themselves. Our mess can be their home. The little male hedgehog has found a shelter. But the stack of firewood is far from ready to settle in for winter. He needs to build himself a real den lined with grass and moss to stay warm in his winter lair until next spring. Right now, he's no way big enough to go to sleep. He only weighs about the same as a packet of butter and needs to double his weight. It'll take a lot of insects to create the layer of fat that'll keep him alive for the many winter months. He must fight now if he is to be ready for winter. Often we don't see the animals in and around the gardens. They disguise themselves to survive and avoid us. So you have to look again, especially when it comes to the rare guests around our gardens. The big and mighty male eagle owl doesn't move an inch. He can sit like this for hours, playing invisible. He's like a commando. His entire being is made to kill, silently and unseen. He lives in the edge of a wood near the garden because there are often inattentive small animals to hunt. He needs about 15 of those a day. He's armed with claws as long as those of a cheetah. And he has a specialized sensory system. His face is flat and leads the sound to his camouflaged ears, which are staggered underneath his plumage. His sense of hearing and excellent vision makes him a silent killer. Right now, he's just sitting still, waiting like a statue. Close to the edge of the woods lives a small but somewhat more lively creature. The male squirrel is light-footed and a busy man in this early autumn. Unlike many other animals in the garden, he doesn't hibernate. 
so he needs to gather a large supply of food before the winter strikes. He'll eat anything the garden has to offer and is constantly foraging in every corner. He pounces on windfalls, fat seeds rich in protein and fungi. He's also not too proud to take what he can find in our bins. But there is no doubt that his absolute favorite is walnuts. And he's efficient. In a split second, he can get through the hard shell to the nuts and the nutrition. that he wears down his teeth. But luckily, they grow constantly. They grow 15 centimeters a year. That is half the length of his body. He must eat constantly to pad out his small body. And the rest he hides in little pantries around the garden. In order to find his treasures again, he makes a mental map. He needs to remember exactly where he hid every single nut, even when the dead leaves cover the lawn and the snow covers all landmarks. It's an incredible feat for his little brain. It looks like carefree play when we see a squirrel jumping around our garden. But the quick leaps and jumps hide a serious matter. It's all about survival. The little male squirrel instinctively knows that he has to be wary of the larger animals in the garden. The male squirrel is deeply focused and his attention is on digging. Yet he senses danger in the quiet. He waves his tail to signal to the owl that he's seen it. But maybe too late. In a panic, the male has ended up in a dead end up the tree. Only an unthinkable leap several meters through the air will save him. He gets ready and uses his tail as a rudder. In a fraction of a second, his little brain has to calculate the distance and angles. Any wrong calculations will see him plummet to the ground which could be fatal. He tightens his spine like a spring and hurls his body into the void. The little male squirrel just barely made it and seeks refuge in his secret nest well hidden in the treetops. Finally, he closes the small grass blinds. Under the logs in the garden, the little male hedgehog is up and about. After moving out on his own, meals have been scarce. So he needs food and must venture into the night to hunt. He is a predator, even if he doesn't look like one. 
Underneath the quills are hidden 10 centimeter long legs, so he can stretch and reach up high when hunting. His incisors are very long, and he can use them like tweezers to pick up insects. But he's not a very experienced hunter and doesn't catch anywhere near as many insects as his mother. He must fight for every single bug and needs something bigger to satisfy his constant hunger. So the little male ventures further into the night. We have no idea how many animals are on the hunt in our gardens when night falls. In the dense jungle of the grass lives the queen of them all. She is a Carabus coriaceus, a type of ground beetle. On her long legs, she can run down even the fastest insects. She senses the tiniest movements of her prey in the grass with her antennae long before she sees it. Tonight, her antennae have picked up on a vulnerable, slow earthworm nearby. She latches on with her razor-sharp jaws and injects her venom. The venom paralyzes the earthworm, and its insides are effortlessly sucked out like a milkshake. But in the deep darkness of the garden, even the deadliest predators have bigger enemies. The little male hedgehog has gotten wind of the ground beetle. His sense of smell is brilliant, and he can enhance it by licking his snout. He moistens it like a dog, so he catches even the most fleeting scent molecules. He slowly approaches his prey. But he has to be wary, because the beetle emits an awful stench when feeling threatened. The ground beetle's defense mechanism makes it freeze and play dead. It's in its highest state of alert and turns up the stench which hits his wet little snout. The intense stench is too much for the little hedgehog and he retreats. But the humiliation isn't complete yet. The ground beetle is also spooked and seeks refuge in the first place handy. The young hedgehog still has a lot to learn and the hunt was quite disappointing. He's been out all night and hasn't had enough to eat, so must trudge back to his new home, hungry and alone. beautiful autumn morning, it's hard to imagine the drama the night had to offer. All is calm and quiet, and the garden has fancy guests. It's a family gathering of grey lag geese that live near the garden. Although many animals cut ties to their young this time of year, this is not the case for the grey lag geese. They live in nuclear families. Although these kids are big teenagers, they stay close to mum and dad. It's natural for them to walk in single file, a remnant from their gosling days when they shouldn't get lost. The parents are also deeply connected and it's for life. The coupling 
is so deep set in them that they are almost copies of one another. They are like an elderly couple sat next to each other. The strong family ties are something they'll need soon. Ahead of them lies a journey south of more than 2,000 kilometers that everyone must take. It's the teenage gosling's first long flight, and the parents have to make sure that the young can survive such a long haul. So they've taken them to a place with good grass, so they can grow big and strong. Their bodies are already getting ready for the long trip. In the autumn, the liver and the genitals shrink and the muscles swell. Also, the plumage must be made ready. They groom and clean it. They coat the feathers with oil from special glands to waterproof them so they can withstand even the harshest rains. Soon, they'll be ready to take off. The goslings must stand the test and try out their wings. hunt is on, and many of the animals are cautious and stressed. A young roe deer doe and her herd is spooked out of the forest. She flees with high leaps, an outright cry to the hunter that she's in shape and he should stay away. At the same time, she spreads the white hairs around her tail as a silent warning cry for the other roe deer. But during the flight, she's separated from the herd. She seeks refuge in a garden nearby, along with other scared forest animals. Right now, she's nervous, fully on alert. Her senses are heightened. The smallest sound makes her turn her ears individually, every which way. She can take off at any time, because she has more than just her own life to protect. She's hiding a secret inside her slender body, an unborn kid. The garden becomes a safe haven for her in dangerous times. If she gives birth in the cold, the baby deer will die. That's why her body is designed so she holds this little fertilized egg and delays the birth until next spring. If she and the unborn kid make it through the winter, there will be new life when the warmth returns. signal that it's over. Faithfully, they inform the tree that they aren't needed any longer. And the tree sheds them all. 
used and worn the leaves float towards the ground. The days are shorter and nightfall comes earlier. There are fewer insects in the air, but the very last of them are still hypnotized by the glow of the street lamp. We spot a single grayish brown one, even though they do their best to blend into the background. There are thousands of different species of moths. They look gray and bashful but they are, in fact, the Cinderella's of the garden. Up close, they are little beauties. This male has wavy golden hair. Yes, almost like a big lion's mane, although he's no bigger than a thumbnail. On the surface, his wings look like velvet. Every single tiny hair is of a microscopic scale that breaks the colors of the light and keeps him warm at the same time. The eyes are like small round pearls and let him see in ultraviolet and colors in the darkest of nights. Moths live most of their lives as caterpillars, but in the autumn they emerge from their pupae to mate. It's last call for male and females to meet before winter arrives. Nearby, there's lots of life in the garden's nesting box. Deep in the darkness of the box, some small furry creatures are crawling around. They may cause a bit of a shiver with their pointy teeth and vampire-like features. But this male bat is facing the same challenges as many of the other animals in the garden. He's soon to hibernate and has a busy time ahead. To survive the coming winter, he must eat as much as 2,000 insects every single night. Tonight, he's planning to locate his favorite meal, moth. This is the beginning of a silent drama in the air above the garden, with speeds of as much as 100 kilometers an hour. The bat is one of the garden's most specialized hunters, utilizing advanced weaponry and wild strategies. All bats are incredible hunters, but the Dorbenton's bat probably takes the prize. He's brilliant at catching flying insects and has specialized in hunting them on the surface of water. The Dorbenton's bat sees images with his echo, and then he uses his other and quite unique weapon to hunt, his built-in sonar. Like a submarine, he emits a sound that cannot be perceived by the human ear. 200 cries per second. His gigantic ears, chest and thighs catch the echo coming back. And from that, he forms a picture of his surroundings and future prey. When he approaches his prey, the interval intensifies. the moth senses the danger. You see, moths too are equipped with sensors that catch the sound waves that the male bat sends towards it. And right now, there are massive waves in the air. The moth reacts to the bat's cries by throwing itself into a death spiral.
to the moth, the water is like a pool of tar. It cannot wriggle free and escape. It's up against two superior forces and fighting the battle of its life. up just one of the several thousand insects he needs in one night, while the little moth has swarmed for the last time. Daylight starts to intrude, and the nocturnal animals return to their dens and nest to sleep. Further into autumn, we humans get ready for the coming winter. We gather supplies and bring the last of nature inside so we can snuggle up in the warmth. The little male hedgehog had made himself comfortable under the stack of logs and had started hibernating. Now he must start over. It takes time to build a nice and warm den and get it ready before it starts freezing. The nights are long and cold now. He must find a new place to make a winter nest that he'll have time to line, so he can sleep safely in the warmth. Every hour counts. A hedgehog with no shelter won't survive the winter. There's something familiar about the pile of branches in the backyard. He's gone to the compost heap where he was born. His safe childhood home. It's just as he left it, well equipped with lots of grass and twigs to snuggle up in. But something catches his attention. The sensitive snout senses something familiar. His mother still lives here. But she's already hibernating. Still, she vaguely senses something disrupting, but her pulse has dropped to an incredible 10 beats per minute. So the fact that it's her own son returning is impossible for her to sense. He's just any other hedgehog trying to capture her den. Shoving and pushing him hard, she makes it clear that this is her property and there's no room for more. So he retreats. More freezing nights are coming and the ground is getting hard. Where can a hedgehog go to find shelter and protection? The winter is close and the time to hibernate is running out.
The family of Greylag geese are now ready to leave Denmark and start the long journey south. They've polished their wings to perfection and full of expectations, they're on their way. Here they'll meet up with other Greylag geese families because they must be part of a huge sky to be able to make the long journey. It's buzzing with life among the travel-minded geese. The Greylag geese are waiting for just the right time to take off. But they don't have a specific time of departure like we humans have. It's hard to organize a joint trip for a large group. But everything is arranged by good democratic consensus. The majority rules. Some impatient geese try to jump the gun. But the mood in the gaggle isn't strong enough yet. But suddenly, enough for ready to go. They agree. This is it. isn't exactly graceful. It's hard to imagine the heavy geese even taking flight. They leave the ground and fold their feet under their bellies like some sort of landing gear. They rise and rise. to arrange themselves. They form a V in the sky, helping each other glide along. They can ascend to 10 kilometers where the temperature can go as low as minus 60 degrees Celsius. From one day to the next, winter is suddenly back in our gardens. It doesn't wait for the animals to head south or get ready for hibernation. The little male hedgehog is weak and can't wait any longer to go to sleep. So he'll have to make do with what he can find. A bit of shelter from frost and snow in a corner of the garden may be his salvation. Only time will tell if it's enough. Maybe the milder winters, with unsettled and warmer weather, will help him. Winter is coming to our gardens. But life goes on out there in the cold. Those left face a hard struggle in the dark season to come. This time of year requires strength to survive and offers untold secrets.